Today's scripture reading comes from the gospel according to John, chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. And if you'd like to follow along in your bulletins, you're welcome to do so. Let us hear these words. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. As some in the congregation are aware, one of my hobbies when I am not preaching is to coach my son's Little League baseball team. We can be sure that God appreciates baseball because the Bible starts out in the beginning. (laughs) One night recently in preparation for our end of season tournament, we were all out and about ready to play a scrimmage game and the players asked me if they could choose teams. Well, they're about 12 years old and they're used to doing this in PE, so I decided to allow them to choose. Of course, it was a little bit gut-wrenching to watch because I know that the players who weren't quite as good would be chosen last, and they were. But I got to thinking about that. Why would the players want to choose their own teams? Really, it's an attempt to secure an outcome. For if something is going to happen and be successful, then it must be up to some kind of human initiation or choice. And that philosophy, that way of being, quite frankly, has been around as part of human nature for centuries. In fact, if you take a look at the social context of early Judaism, first century rabbinic culture, part of what you learn is that an ancient disciple would have always had the ability to choose his rabbi, would consider the learning outcome, would consider the rabbi's character, and would make the choice themselves as to who they would follow as the master teacher or as the master rabbi. For it's just human nature, is it not? If you're seeking to control an outcome, then you have to choose. I mean, consider just for a moment an outcome in your own life that you're wanting to control, and the initiation of how well uh, it will be controlled really is up to you. Perhaps it is some kind of success that you want to have in the fear of failure, Or perhaps it's some kind of adversity that you are going through and trying to get to the other side of. Or perhaps it's a frustrating problem that you are attempting to control so that you can solve whatever problem that might be. It's just human nature that if you want to control an outcome, then it has to be up to you. You are the one who is going to take the initiative to do it all. And it is into that human nature that Jesus spoke words to his early disciples that at that time would have been considered as strengthening as they were, quite frankly, shocking. 
Jesus shared back with them, you didn't choose me, I chose you. As if to say, as you go on and bear fruit and live the Christian life, I want you to remember that yes, you're part of it. Yes, your choices matter. Yes, you are participating in my call. But don't ever forget that you didn't choose me first. I chose you. To explain how empowering those words are, I was reading a blog a couple of weeks ago, and there was a minister, and she was blogging about today's church service as it related to the lectionary, John chapter 15 being the gospel teaching of, of the church universal. And she was talking about how on Cinco de Mayo, there are so many Americans who mistakenly believe that Cinco de Mayo is the day that celebrates Mexico's independence and how easy it is for us to just go off track and to believe something that isn't quite true. And she likened it to this scripture passage and going to church, asking the question, did you choose to go to church this morning or did Jesus choose you? A rather interesting question. And that word choice, by the way, deserves a little bit of theological attention. We are all familiar with that theology of chosenness that is out there that uh, leads to pride and might even lead to a, a kind of violence. But that is not what Jesus is talking about here. Really, that choice is the unconditional love of Christ extended to the believer. It's a choice that says you are valuable simply for being. You didn't choose me. I chose you. Mother Teresa put it another way. She made an observation about John chapter 15 that I think is exactly right on target. Mother Teresa said that there are two kinds of love in this world. There is the kind of love that seeks value, that chases after whatever is winsome and attractive, you know, the best player. And then there's a second kind of love, said Mother Teresa. It's the kind of love that creates value, that says back to a person, you are valuable simply for being. That's the unconditional love of Christ for the disciples in this text. When Christ made that remark, you didn't choose me, I chose you. And that brings your life value. It's empowering when you consider it. I recall a time in my own ministry, it was approximately 20 years ago, where I ran into this scripture in a practical context. I was then at the time serving a church in San Antonio, Texas, and there was a consultant from the Alban Institute for Church Research that was helping the church do some future visioning. And the consultant in the future visioning was analyzing the church's mission statement, which was at the time, we love God and we are in service to the world. And he quoted John chapter 15 and he said, you know, you might want to consider changing that to God loves us and we respond to God's love by serving in the world. It's really empowering when you think about it. We didn't choose Christ. Christ chooses us. Next January in 2025, Will Williman, a well-known Christian author, is going to be guest preaching here at Naples UCC. And the title of Williman's memoir that he wrote a few years ago is Accidental Preacher. And as the title of that book alludes, Williman has long believed that the vocation more chose him than he chose the vocation. And one of the excellent lines in Williman's book that he observes about himself is this. He said, one of the great miracles of my life is that God chose, yes, even the likes of me to be for God. Williman then goes on to share in that book that there are buckets upon buckets of sermons where the minister stands in front of the congregation and does everything she or he can to, you know, get the congregation to believe in God. But the only strategy more important than that, said Williman, and the one that truly works 
is to simply share back with the congregation that God believes in you. God believes in you. You didn't choose me. I chose you. If you came to service this morning, share, struggling with some adversity, frustrated by a problem, wondering how you're going to arrive at a certain outcome, know that God is part of it all. And may you be as shocked and empowered as Christ's early disciples were, knowing that you didn't choose Christ, Christ chose you. You are loved and valued simply for being 